Hello! In this video, we're going to show you an opposing layout using LMI laser line profiler sensors. And we're going to show you a demo of aligning them using two different methods. So these are a bunch of the possible multi-sensor layouts with LMI's laser line profilers. And they all have different advantages. A wide layout is very good for covering a wider area than a single sensor would allow and increasing your resolution over the scan area. The reverse layout reduces shadows. We'll talk about the opposing head or opposite layout in a minute. An angled layout is really good for volume measurements when you need to see the sides of your part. And a ring layout allows you to position three, four, or a lot more, up to 13 laser line profilers around a part to scan all the different features. But today we're going to focus on the opposite layout. So in an opposite layout, you configure two laser line profilers facing each other, and the target is going to be in the region where they overlap. And this allows you to see the top and bottom of a part. It's particularly good for measuring thickness. We show two sample applications here, inspecting extrusion, performing measurements on the thickness, and then scanning wooden boards in the pencil manufacturing process. And using a opposite layout lets you see, again, the top and bottom of your part. Now the LMI laser line profilers come factory calibrated, so there's no um, calibration that's necessary from the user. All of your units are in millimeters, there's no pixel space that you need to worry about, but when you use multiple sensors, there is a need to align your sensors using some kind of alignment target, a disc, bar, polygon, uh, there's a bunch of options available, and what the alignment does is tell all the sensors where the other sensors are so they can combine their scan data. All right, let's get to the demo. So this is a live video of our setup. We have two, these are Gokator 2330 laser line profilers positioned in an opposing head layout. These sensors give me about a three inch wide field of view in the area where they overlap. And I'm gonna use a UR5E robot to position different parts, including my alignment targets in between these sensors. The parts I'm gonna be using, first we'll use a little toy block this actually will work well as an alignment target as well because it is a uh, square. So I can use those dimensions to align my two sensors. And I'm also gonna be using a bar here with a hole in it as a separate alignment target to show that process as well. The other view that you see here is my browser interface. I'm connected to one of these sensors and I've already gone ahead and specified my layout. So I've connected my two sensors, the 20 model 2330 Gokator, and I've specified in the software that they are in an opposing layout. And so really the next step before I start scanning is to perform my alignment. I'm gonna to go to the scan settings page and just take a live picture to show what's going on right now. I place my hand in between the sensors, you'll see the profiles that are being acquired by both sensors. Here you can see the top and the bottom lasers. And you'll notice that the image doesn't look quite right because the sensors aren't aligned. So I'm seeing good profiles, but they're not being stitched together. And that's where our alignment comes in. So let's go ahead and perform an alignment first using a polygon. I'm going to use that little toy block that I showed earlier. So first our robot is going to move our alignment target in position. You can see the two sensors are not aligned. The uh, top and bottom scan don't line up. But when we select align, the system uses that information and stitches those profiles together. Make sure this worked. We go to our robot and just rotate that block. You'll see the wrist of the robot turning. 
and the block is the profile of the block that looks like it should. So now let's go ahead and take a full 3D scan. We'll put our system into surface scan mode. And go ahead with a single scan. And there's our image. This is a nice 3D image. We are getting information from the top sensor, seeing that number seven. And from the bottom, we're seeing that number three, and they're stitched together correctly so that we see both surfaces together. I should point out that what the alignment did was generate a transformation for both the top and the bottom sensor, and that's shown here in our sensor settings. All right, so that showed how to perform alignment using a polygon stationary alignment. Let's go ahead and now do a moving alignment using our bar. So we're going to clear our alignment from the polygon and switch over to moving alignment using the bar. So let's go ahead and do our alignment now with this bar. You'll see if I show a live image of the two profiles together, they're not aligned but they will be after we do the alignment. We have the bar in position. Now we can click align. Move the robot. All right, and it looked like the alignment worked. If I pass my hand underneath the sensor, you see the image looks like it's being stitched together correctly. Now let's go ahead and scan our block again to verify. We'll go into surface mode and show our 3D image. And there we are. We have our top scan and our bottom scan. And because we've aligned everything correctly, they're stitched together correctly. So hopefully this video showed you what an opposite multi-sensor layout is, why you would use it, and how easy it is to align to LMI GoCator sensors using a variety of alignment targets. Thank you.